Hey everyone, at Zim Reunion, I'm not sure if I'm loud enough or you can hear, but for this week, you're, you might be looking at me like, hey Stefan, what the heck is going on? I've already seen that costume. Why are you wearing it? You said you have a new costume every single week. Hmm, I wonder what he's, what, what he's, there's another one! There's two because it's May the 4th and I decided I'm gonna have two in one. I'm not gonna commit the whole time, but I'm gonna keep this on for at least announcements. Because if you haven't heard, first of all, we took about, about two weeks ago to say, Hey, Stefan, to change it up, you should have a different costume on every single week and we're gonna be keeping track and maybe at the end, I'll do something like put them all on at once, so like I just did there, or something like that. I am out of breath because that was a very warm and very surprisingly difficult intro. Uh, I almost tripped and died. It was wonderful. Uh, but no, uh, we are taking part in Zoom meetings where, you, where we are going to be talking about this video, one video every week that I want you guys I want you guys to be there for. If you're taking part in and having a good time and hanging out with us. Okay, it's getting really hot in this mess, so I have stopped committing. <laughs> but I really it's been a ton of fun. Last week we played a game, we're gonna be playing another game this week and we're so excited to see you guys there. I was hanging out with you guys this week and I'll be hanging out with you guys again. And uh, yeah, I really encourage you guys to be there if you haven't seen it already. The other thing is, this is going to be going up on YouTube. It's not just going to be on the Facebook page, but I'm going to be posting it on Instagram or posting a link on Instagram so you can find it really super easy so that people aren't like, what? Where the, where the heck is the video for this week? I don't know where to find it. I don't know where to find stuff and talking about all the stuff. So that's where, what we're going to be doing for the foreseeable future. One video a week. Zoom meetings, get in on it. Uh, it's been a ton of fun, and it's been been good to sort of uh, get a consistent rhythm back into it. Uh, before we jump into this week, though, let's uh, let's bow our heads in prayer uh, just so that God can lead us. Lord God, I pray that as we go into this week's teaching, that as we talk about you and talk about prayer, that uh, you would you would guide the conversation, that you would guide my words to uh, speak to the students who are listening. In your name we pray. Amen. So, over the past couple weeks, over the past couple videos, we've been talking about prayer, and specifically how one big idea is, uh, well, okay, let's back it up in just a second. We've all prayed for stupid, ridiculous things. I have, I have. Like, a couple weeks ago, I talked about how I prayed for a snow day when I really, really, really needed one, or really, really wanted one. Uh, <laughs> now, that one didn't come true, but if you've been tracking with us, yeah, we've been talking about prayer for the past couple weeks and how prayer equals change. And over the past three weeks, we've been talking about that it can change uh, in us or to the world around us. Uh, every time you pray, something changes, something happens. There, there is a movement and something happening when you pray. And in week one, the first thing we talked about, let's, let's recap a little bit. So, in week one, we talked about how prayer is a circle, starting with God and ending with God, and going through the Holy Spirit, Jesus, and you, and how all three are involved in one. And, uh, and how God, prayer should always start with God and end with God. And in the second week, we talked about how, how prayer can be really powerful when we use scripture, what God has given us to pray. When we, when we focus on that, it can be incredibly powerful. And in week three, just last week, we talked about, talked about the Lord's Prayer and uh, 
following what Jesus, Jesus' example of how we should pray. And today's conversation is going to be a, a little bit different. Today's video is going to be a little bit different. In all three conversations, we've talked about how prayer shouldn't be uh, about us and, and our, our wants and desires, but instead asking, uh, instead of diving straight into the asking for things, we should always start our prayers how important it is. We've always said how important it is that we start with what God wants. There's there's sort of a one part of prayer, or one, let's call it version of prayer, where I think God actually in, encourages us to ask for what we're seeking for, uh, but not what we want, or, or not what we want, yeah, not what we want, but instead for the people around us, the, the needs of others. So what I'm talking about, it, I'm going to jump into Romans 8. 34. It's, it's a section of scripture we've circled back on and circled back on. But it says this, Who is the one who condemns? Christ Jesus is the one who died, but even more has been raised. He is also at the right hand of the God, right hand of God, and intercedes for us. Now, in, the, in this translation, it says intercedes uh, on our behalf for God. In others, uh, it says Jesus is speaking to God on our behalf or praying for us. Whatever you choose, whatever words you choose, the concept is that God works with God. God prays for us. To, uh, sorry, Jesus prays for us to God, and that's what intercession is. It's praying on behalf. Um, for other people. And, and inter intercession isn't just something that Jesus does. It's not just Jesus talking to God. It's not that only Jesus can do this. But instead Jesus calls us to do the exact same thing. It's possible uh, to pray for others and see their lives dramatically change. That's the power of God working through prayer. But before we learn to pray effectively, there's something Jesus says, uh, saw, something Jesus saw that he wants to, for us to see as well. And in, uh, he's, he's talking about it in Matthew uh, 9, 35 through 38, where it says this, Then Jesus went to all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the good news of the kingdom healing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he felt compassion for them, because they were weary and worn out like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is abundant, but the workers are few. Therefore, pray to the Lord of the harvest to send out workers into his harvest. The first thing that we see here is that when Jesus looked at the crowd of people, he understood them. When Jesus saw all these people who, who were flocking to him, um, he understood them. He got where they were coming from. They, he understood their needs. He, he understood that they were harassed, helpless, abused, and abandoned. Uh, he saw so many people who needed his help. He compared them to sheep that didn't have a protector, a, someone to watch over them. There's a difference between seeing someone and truly understanding them. Jesus didn't just see them. He looked beyond the surface to what they truly needed. Um, he understood that they, they needed him, that they needed a savior. More than that, Jesus loved them. As soon as Jesus saw the people, Matthew tells us that he had compassion on them. While everyone else looked at the crowds and not even giving them a second thought, Jesus went out of his way to express love to them. I don't know if you've ever been picked on or bullied, but when Jesus, but what Jesus did here was extraordinary. It's rare that 
you or I will look at someone and be willing to take the time to truly understand them. We usually are, are busy or occupy ourselves with our, our phones or our friends. or We're just very, very busy. To take notice uh, of someone who might be hurting. But Jesus models us and models right here a new way for us to live. That we can care for the people. Uh, living and caring for other people. He saw them. He understood them. He noticed that they were lost and hurting. And then he did something about it. And, and what did Jesus do about it? And what, what was his, his drive there? He told the disciples to, to get started, to get busy. The harvest, Jesus said, is plentiful. What, when Jesus said the harvest, what, what is he talking about there? Like, are you harvesting people? What's going, what's going on here, Jesus? Uh, he is, instead, he is talking about the huge number of people on the planet who need to know him and have their lives changed by him, by Jesus. When Jesus sees people, he sees how desperately they need him. His primary goal is to see people come to know him. But the workers, Jesus said, are few. There, there's so much work to be done. There are so many people out there that desperately need him. But there aren't enough workers. Um, these workers, Jesus, is, as Jesus calls them, are intercessors. Just like Jesus, people, uh, Jesus prays and begs and pleads on behalf of people. He wants us to do the same. He wants us to pray for people, to um, pray to God for, for them so that they could come to know him. And like, as much as you might be like, oh, well, how do we do that? How do we go? Why would, how much of an effect? I've seen this effect in my own life. I've seen it with my friend Mac. He, he just, the first time I met him, he did not, he was not a believer. He did not believe that Jesus was real or that God existed, let alone that he is a savior or that he cares about him. And over many, many years, I prayed for him and I spent time with him. And I, I prayed God for him to, for God to show up with him, with him in, to show up to him in a big way. And I'll, here's one thing I want you to get with the intercessory, is that just because you're praying about it now, just because you want it and God calls you to pray about it, does not mean you're going to see an immediate reaction. I knew Mac for four years and I was friends with him and I prayed for him and I believed that Jesus would show up in his life in a big way. But it wasn't for four years until Jesus really showed up in a big way. Um, but that doesn't mean I ever stopped praying for him. That doesn't mean I ever stopped caring for him. And what's crazy is I've seen his life turn around in such a big way since Jesus entered it. There's a reason Jesus offers himself because he is more than we could have ever asked for, or he's more than we could have ever deserved, and he is, he changes lives and he changes the world. And he, he starts though, he starts with prayer. That's where all of this starts. That's how we are planting the seeds. That's how we are interceding. We're begging God for other people. That's what intercession is. We spent a lot of time this month uh, becoming more aware of how prayer works uh, and how to pray more effectively. And, and now that we have that, let's take that knowledge and pray for something that matters most. Um, because it matters to God that others, others come to know him. That is God's first and foremost. Um, what matters to him first and foremost? That people come to know him and are impacted by his life and his life. And what's so interesting is that we're really, 
right now in this specific time that we may not get the chance to interact with this these people these people that we know in our lives these whether it's your family your friends your school or your general community whether that's Ottawa, Greeley, Manitick wherever that larger community is right now in this specific time and place we have an opportunity to pray for the people around us because we can't impact their lives as clearly as as readily as as we would be able to right like we're not seeing people every day we're not talking to people every day we don't go to school and see all of our friends and we don't get to see them as often that doesn't mean we can't still have an impact and, and it's even more clear because we can't we always had the power to impact their lives through prayer and to allow jesus to work in them or to um to yeah encourage jesus to work in them through prayer but in, right now we have this huge opportunity to pray into that because that's in some ways the, the one thing we definitely can do in this moment and so for the next few minutes i just i want to encourage you to pray for the people in our lives um who don't know him uh, whether that's your family your friends your school and your community as we do um, ask yourself what each one of these groups of people need in prayer try not to just see them but truly understand what they need so that they can see Jesus do they need to know uh, and, and all the different ways that that works out um, do they just need to know Jesus right now do they need healing are they um, on a, a dangerous or destructive path are they suffering in some way uh, whether it's heartbreak loneliness uh, anxiety or depression do they just do they just need a friend I I just really encourage you right now as I, I guide us through this this time um, really search your heart and allow God to speak to you what you should intercede to them for because God is always speaking and God knows them better than you know them so I really encourage you to just dig deep and um, yeah pray for them in that way so just bow your heads with me right now and uh, Let's start with our family, um, Lord God. Show, show these students how they can pray for their family. What do you think God look, sees when he looks at your family? Are there needs, pains, potential possibilities of your family members? How can you intercede for them? Your friends. What does God see when he looks at your friends? What are the needs, pains, potential, and possibilities of the people you spend time with? How can you intercede for them? Your school. What does God see when he looks at your school? What are the needs of your school, the pains of your school, the potentials, the possibilities of other students and teachers, the people you're still interacting with? Um, and how can you intercede for them? And lastly, your community. What does God see when he looks at your community? What are the needs, pains, potential, and possibilities uh, of your larger community? And how can you intercede for your neighbors? Oh my God, I pray over all of these groups and all of these students that you would, you would speak to them and that you would 
allow them to become harvesters, allow them to be people who intercede, who call on you for, for their friends and their family and the people who need you, Lord God. I pray that you would start revealing stuff, Lord God, that you would you would show up in in these students' lives and that you would you would minister to them and that you would minister to their friends and that they would see change in their life, that they would see change in their friends' lives and their family lives. In this specific time, I pray that you would you would encourage prayer, that you would encourage intercession for when we do get to see each other again, that when they get back together, one of their friends goes, hey, I don't know what was happening, but I just felt this. I felt something different, Lord God. Lord God, I pray over, over the students, and I pray that you would, you would speak to them. We've been saying it over and over again. Prayer equals change. And prayer, most of all, equals change when you pray for what matters. When you pray for the people that Jesus loves, that they would come to know his love. When you pray for the things of other people, Lord. Thank you guys for joining in. Um, we'll see you this Wednesday. Um, we love you.